there's a graphics card on eBay right now that you're not even supposed to own, and it's going for $5,500. One company made an SSD that can literally wipe itself from existence. Jack Dorsey dropped a secure chat app that forgot one tiny little detail, security. Cooler Master PC cases are now showing up in the last place that you'd expect, and we're gonna wrap with a throwback to one of the most chaotic OS launches ever. You know the drill, let's get into it. All right, guys, Cooler Master cases were spotted as decor in Disneyland, of all places. And honestly, they fit in way too well. <laughs> Let's take a peek at this. All right, so I saw this pop up on the PC Mastery subreddit. Check this out. We had a Reddit user who said, I saw these cases being used as decoration at Disneyland. What are they? And why are they so huge? Tell me that full-size giant cases have died without telling me. People are going, wait, why are these so big? Brother, that used to be common, like super common. Common. And by the way, these cases, anyone know? And anyone who's watching this, do you know what this case is? Just take a look at it. What is it? Bonus points if you know. I'll tell you right now. It's Cooler Master Cosmos case. Now, there are several variations of this case. The super old one, I think, goes back to the early-ish 2000s. This, I believe, is a Cosmos 2. We've got a bunch of people showing off their builds down below. Here it is. Someone's never seen a full height case before. It's not as common as it used to be. I used to really like those big Silverstone TJ cases. The, those were so sick back in the day. I really liked them. The brushed aluminum, that was awesome. But you don't really see massive cases anymore. And you certainly wouldn't expect to see one at freaking Disneyland. And for those that don't know, the original Cosmo series, it launched around 2007. Aluminum, full tower, built for like hardcore airflow and modding. This was like for super high-end user. Now seeing this at Disneyland is kind of interesting. I'm curious if you've seen some unique stuff at Disneyland in terms of PC stuff, because this isn't the first reported case. So apparently they uh, spotted these cases around Space Mountain and the Star Wars zones, which is totally on brand for the next gen tech vibes that they're trying to go for there. It's kind of cool. You never know what you're going to see in the wild. I've seen some crazy stuff out there. So yep, now you know, that's a Cooler Master Cosmos, an absolute tank of a case. Disney, you've got great taste. Team Group just made an SSD that can nuke itself for real. And this is not a prank. Let's check it out. Team Group launches self-destruct NVMe SSD, which which can erase all data in a click. It's kind of a useful feature. I'm wondering when you would need something like this. Let me know if you can find a use case for it in the comments down below. We've got some creative folks in the community. Team Group showcases PCIe 4.0 SSD built with secure independent destruction circuit, which is suitable for various sectors. So we're gonna get into what this use is for here. All right, let's check it out. Data destruction has never been so effortless with the launch of the P250Q self-destruct SSD. Users can now delete the entire data present on the drive with a single click. This new SSD offers an innovative solution to data destruction and based on its intelligent design, various press durations can enable different erasure modes. So I'd imagine like maybe it's time-based or something like that. Well, let's dig into it and find out. I think this would have been super helpful when I was like a teenage boy. <laughs> Be like, I, I, erase all, erase the drive, get everything off of there. I don't want to see you drown in my Sims in the pool. Let's get rid of this stuff. But apparently there's some industrial uses for this as well. Let's figure that out. Team Group, one of the leading memory and storage manufacturers, released this SSD with secure independent destruction circuit, enabling the drive to carry out data destruction using a button through intelligent dual mode data destruction and intelligent continuous execution mechanism. The SSD received the 2025 Computex Best Choice Award for cybersecurity as it met, and this makes the most sense, strict security and stability requirements needed for military, industrial, servers, gaming. Quick, delete all my game files. Can't let them know how much time I've been spending on this. As per team group, this drive brings patented independent destruction circuit for erasing the data at a hardware level. By directly targeting the flash IC, it's able to erase all data and can even resume the operation after the system gets abruptly shut down due to a power outage. Based on the duration of the press and the multi-stage LED indicators, users can track erasure process in real time, making it highly reliable and robust. Now, this isn't like the fastest drive in the world. It's still PCIe 4, 7,000 sequential read, 5,500, write speeds, which is fine for the majority of things. This isn't trying to break any records for sure. So how does this work? Let's break it down. Apparently what it does is it uses a hardware circuit to physically zap the NAND chips when it's triggered. So there's no software involved in this. It's like a hardware level. And the erasure itself apparently takes 0.1 seconds or less actually with LEDs that actually show you what the destruction process looks like, what's happening on the drive. Obviously built for corporate defense, medical sectors, even I would imagine, consumer 
consumer pricing, who knows where it's gonna come in, but I would expect a premium for this technology that they've come up with here. It's great for a secret lab, or if you've got a uh, serious fear of your ex recovering old files, I guess. Let me know if you have a use for this, or if you can think of something I didn't mention. Let me know in the comments down below. And hey, while you're down there, there's a subscribe button and a like button. I'm just saying, I'm not telling you to click it, but please. You guys remember Jack Dorsey, co-founder of Twitter? Well, he dropped a secure messaging app that hasn't actually been tested for security. Let's dig into this. Jack Dorsey says his secure new BitChat app has not been tested for security. Now, BitChat, if you haven't heard all of the rumblings and rumors and talk on the internet about this app, it's actually really cool from a technology standpoint. It's actually rad. It uses a Bluetooth LE mesh network uh, with rippling relay. No internet needed in order to run this app and transmit messages. The down and dirty of it, for those of you that don't know, uses BLE, like how airdrop or contact tracing apps work. So the messages hop from phone to phone. If you're out of Bluetooth range, your message can still reach its destination through other connected users. So think of it kind of like digital leapfrog. But the security side, which is what we're going to get into right now, uh, has been found lacking. On Sunday, Block CEO and Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey launched an open source app called BitChat, promising to deliver secure and private messaging without a centralized infrastructure infrastructure. The app relies on Bluetooth and end-to-end -end encryption, unlike traditional messaging apps that rely on the internet. By being decentralized, BitChat has the potential for being a secure app in high-risk environments where the internet is monitored or inaccessible. According to Dorsey's white paper detailing the app's protocols and privacy mechanisms, BitChat's system design prioritizes security. So this app is claimed secure by design, but where people are starting to go, hey, please be careful when using this, and, and Jack Dorsey even says it himself, no third party or external security review Reviews have been done on this app yet, and people are already starting to poke some holes in this thing. The claims that the app is secure are already facing scrutiny by security researchers, given that the app and its code have not been reviewed or tested for security issues at all by Dorsey's own admission. And he says it on the GitHub page. He says the software has not received external security review, may contain vulnerabilities, does not necessarily meet its stated security goals. Do not use it for production use. So basically right now, this is the uh, most of beta testing. You know, selling a secure messaging app without testing security. Seems like selling a parachute that you haven't opened yet. What I think kind of happened here is Jack really just speed ran the beta test in production playbook on this one. Now, some interesting things are like, oh, well, he warned everyone that he already, he did his due diligence. He told you that it had issues. Well, guess what? The warning that appears on the main GitHub project page now was not there at the time that the app came out. The latest disclaimer came after a security researcher found that it's possible to impersonate someone else and trick a person's contact into thinking that they're talking to a legitimate contact. Now, I'm no expert on security matters. I'm just a humble graphics card preacher and researcher and lover of shiny graphics card backplates. But it seems like your secure messaging app should be secure. Seems like being able to impersonate someone else and trick another person's contacts is bad. It's just me though, I'm just a guy, just a guy in a tank top. And this very security researcher who called it out wrote that BitChat had a broken identity authentication and verification system that allows a hacker to intercept someone's identity key and peer ID pair, which is essentially a digital handshake that is supposed to establish a trusted connection between two people using the app. BitChat calls these favorite contacts and marks them with a star icon. The goal of the feature is to allow two BitChat users to interact, knowing that they are talking to the same person that they talked to before. Guess what? No response from Dorsey on TechCrunch's request for comment. So the bottom line here is don't trust the app yet for sensitive stuff. Maybe not at all until it's been reviewed by security expert. And there's a lot of good backing to that too. Like security, this is a great quote from the researcher that discovered this kind of issue with the app and impersonating contacts. Goes on to say security is a great feature to have for going viral. That does great stuff for you. But a basic sanity check, like do the identity keys actually do any cryptography would be a very obvious thing to test when building something like this. So the idea is great. The technology, super cool. I'm on board for that. Maybe uh, don't dip your feet in the water quite yet though, is the moral of the story here. Somebody is selling a China only Galax RTX 5090D on eBay. It's fully illegal in China, dual 16 pin power and a $5,500 price tag. Let's see what insanity we're up to today. Come check it out. You know, at this point, Galax should just start bundling these with a mortgage application. Look at this bad boy. Galax RTX 5090D HOF 
Seed Lab with dual 16 pin connectors lands on eBay starting at almost $5,500. Now, assuming that you could get a 5090 at MSRP, Founders Edition even, you could buy two of them at this price. So why are people so interested in this or why might someone be interested in this? Let's try to figure it out together. The flagship Galax GPU only sold in China has now appeared on eBay and look at it. It's actually a really cool looking GPU. Uh, if you're into the white design and the cool shapes and RGB and fans and crazy looking stuff, this is probably the GPU for you, but it might not be. There's a caveat here on why you definitely don't want this and it goes beyond just it being $5,500. My gosh, what are we doing? First, let's do a little backstory. NVIDIA is not allowed to sell its flagship GeForce RTX 5090 graphics card in the Chinese market. For this reason, they developed the 5090D, as you'll remember. A special variant that matches the gaming performance of the original, but has reduced AI inference capabilities, allowing it to be sold in China. Now, unfortunately for NVIDIA, government policy changed here in the United States, and now even the 5090D can't be sold there. In fact, we got some rumors of a 5090 Double D coming out, which is a hilarious name. I don't know why they didn't just stick with that. I think it's very funny. Do it for the memes, Jensen. Instead, the new variant of the 5090D is a 5090D V2. What happened is that the 5090D cards, which may have been produced elsewhere, are now available on eBay to customers worldwide. What do you do when you can't sell that card in China anymore? Well, scalpers go scalp, baby. The 5090D supply was heavily controlled by board partners who often sold most of these cards to large dealers or system integrators like Meta PCs. Is that an ad? Does that qualify as, as an ad? Even though we don't sell in China? I'll take it. Finding a 5090D at MSRP was nearly impossible at launch, and now it's completely impossible because it's no longer officially on sale. While gamers and scalpers in China wait for that 5090D V2 that we just talked about, the already produced 5090D cards are being sold on eBay by several companies. Importantly, it's not just any 5090D card, but arguably one of the top RTX 5090D models ever made. This is a special HOFOC Lab Edition. It's got two 16-pin power connectors. It was once thought to be exclusive to the overclocking community, but baby, where there's profit, there's supply. So 5,500 bucks, you could, assuming you could get them, which you probably can't, two Founders Edition 5090s for the same price. So why would someone be interested in this? A heavy focus on overclocking on this card. So, I mean, it's a great card by all means. I don't want to like poo-poo on the card itself, but why not just get an Astral card at this point? I'll tell you why. It's because it doesn't have dual 12 volt two by six implementation like this card does, which is definitely worth premium. In fact, we're going to check out the comments in a minute, and I'm sure that there's going to be some references to fire down below, if I were to guess. Main issue, aside from the crazy price, is access to the so-called XOC BIOS. This BIOS unlocks full power up to 2000 watts, which is essentially what overclockers want, at least as an option. Otherwise, what's the freaking point of buying the card? Really? My take on it, if someone does actually buy a card at $5,500, some weird form, twisted form of bragging rights, some demented, crazy, an insane person who just wants to have that card, the 5090D, because double Ds are a bit too much. That's my, that'd be my guess. Whatever. I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. Uh, let's read the comments on this, see what you guys are saying down below. And yet, my micro center has three different open box 5090s starting at $2,500, and they still sit there three weeks later unsold. Also, they have about 85 new in stock and can't sell any of them. Hilarious. So the gall to think that someone would go on eBay and be like, $5,500? It's white. Ooh, it's been nerfed too, but 216 pin. Gotta have it. Here's my card. I don't think that's happening. I mean, imagine spending $5,500 to still get frame drops in Star Citizen. It's just weird. And here's the comment that I was looking for. I didn't have to dig too far for this one. If 600 watts risks melting your cable, 2000 watts will risk setting your GPU on fire, burning down your entire house. There it is. He says what everyone's thinking on this one. And the comment of the day, Raffle. That's about where I sit on that one. Let me know what you guys think about this below. On this day, this very day, well, not this day. This week was a very special week in history because 26 years ago, Windows 98 dropped and the internet is remembering the chaos that came along with it. Come with me on a trip down memory lane. All right, guys, so this is a video from the release day of Windows 98. It's been 26 years. Anyone else feeling absolutely ancient? Aside from the fact that the comments call me unk all the time now. I'll take it, I guess. I do be getting old. Check this out. Uh, this video of the Windows 98 release. People lined up. Will this ever happen again? Will we ever have lines out the door for an OS? Not likely. Um, so those days are long gone. But check this out. You got people running through the store. This guy's got a captain's hat on. What a good looking gentleman. That guy's 
ready to buy a new OS. He's hustling. Now, this guy is my favorite. Fat32 said Fat32 like it owed him money. Now, listen, the reason Fat32 is important, as hilarious as that clip was, Fat32 actually played a pretty big role in Windows 98 adoption for a lot of people that knew what the heck it did. Fat stands for File Allocation Table. We've got NTFS and all that great stuff now. It's a thing of the past, but Windows 98 introduced Fat32. You could have up to two terabytes. Could you imagine? Man, two terabytes. Who needs all that storage? Gamers of today, to answer your question, at a minimum almost. And you know, Windows 98, that was one of the first operating systems that I used. It was a, it was a great OS because it introduced things like plug and play, DVD, and USB era. You felt like a magician watching hardware auto install. It was crazy stuff. And uh, one of my favorite moments from Windows 98 history was Comdex Bill Gates. You remember that? A little clip here. Check it out. It's going to say, hey, I see you plugged in a new device and it's going to load in the appropriate drivers. You'll notice that this scanner build, whoa. This is when Bill Gates demoed Windows 98 and uh, a USB scanner triggered the blue screen of death, rest in peace, during a live presentation. Now that's something you love to see. Seeing Bill Gates get a little uh, squirmish and embarrassed on stage, it's not the worst thing that could happen, you know? At launch day, Windows 98 sold over 530,000 licenses in the first four days and later reached 58 million users. Big bad OS. Let me know what your first operating system was down below. I'm curious to see what we got in the comments make me feel old if someone says windows vista i swear i swear all right guys that's gonna do it for me thanks so much for hanging out make sure that you like subscribe and drop a comment down below it helps the channel to grow we'll see you next time